Hey guys, we're back out in Phoenix, Arizona at Ramjet, hanging with uh, James Mack. We're gonna talk this pretty badass FX DLS. Um, before we jump into that, man, uh, kind of give us a bit of your backstory. I know you do a ton of bikes. This is like your second FX, FX DLS that's pretty awesome. You've had that bag of your building kind of deal. Um, so give us a little bit of history about you, kind of what you do, not necessarily about motorcycles, but just in general, but then also like kind of how you got into bikes. And I know you do a ton of riding, so talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, always been a motorcycle enthusiast. Um, I wasn't riding my whole life. I got a motorcycle when I could afford one. Um, before that, my stepdad would let me ride his 97 Heritage Softail and thought I was cool riding that until I got my own bike and really started to fall in love with Harleys and Harley scene. And at that time, what I considered like custom cool to now, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just fell in love with making bikes my own, um, putting my own spin on things. I like sort of timeless style, um, not into a bunch of fancy parts and this and that, but I spend a lot of money on stuff, but it performs well um, to my riding style and my liking. Yeah, that was one of the first things. Uh, big shout out to Leo Massaro. He's got actually, let me know about your bikes because yeah. I've never seen them before. Um, but then going back through and you had your first, it was a Dino Loader S2, right? Or was it was it just, just uh, FXDL. FXDL, okay, all right. Yeah. But it, it was blue and chromed out, but it, like timeless, all the right parts. And so I feel like there's been a thing with all your bikes. They've been super nice in terms of all the right components and they're super clean, but like they're not over the top, like tacky or flashy kind of, very understated. Yeah, it was funny though, because when I had um, my FXDL and we'd park that next to this, um, when you take it to bike shows, it was funny because everybody would walk past this bike and they go straight to the chrome. It's just, you know, a shiny allure. They're like, oh my God, this. But as people throughout the day would come back and look, they'd be like, oh shit, this bike has carbon fiber wheels. Oh shit, this has that. So Tony and I would laugh about it because it was just funny that if you weren't really looking, you walk right past the bike and think, oh, it's another Dyna with a T-Sport, let's keep it pushing, you know, so. Oh yeah, it's super understated because it's just, I, I like the big on just like the solid color. And I like that whole simple is clean, yep. simple and clean, less is more deal. And it's just like, oh, it's maroon and black, like club style, like like everything else. But then you're like, oh, carbon wheels, you said, like rail mounted brakes, inverted, all that kind of stuff. So um, did you build the blue and chrome one first or this one first? The blue and chrome one, I actually, bought built okay it was tony's bike okay he sold it to me i had this one first though so okay. i was in the process of building this and it was my only bike at the time and it sucked every time my bike was down i'd not have a bike for a month or two or this or that and i'm like crap i need another bike so tony was selling it i bought it from him and i had that but then when i had two dinas i was like well this is cool but it would be nice to have a road glide so then when Tony sold me that bike, um, it was under a condition that if I ever sold it, I had to give him first right to buy it. So when I told him I want to sell it, he bought it right back for me on the spot. There you go. <laughs> and then I bought my road glide. Okay, so. nice. And so that's, uh, I guess, before we get a little more into this, you also, um, you talk about like riding them and like you're obviously building them with the right parts to ride. Um, even with your three bikes, you, you lay down a lot of miles too, right? Yeah, so I go to Sturgis every year, um, ride there, ride back. Um, go to various shows, just depending on my work schedule, what um, I'm permitted to go to. Um, but yeah, I put a lot of miles down and everything that I put on, it's for a performance base and obviously style too, but um, I want it to perform well because that's the way I like to ride. Okay. Um, and then I guess maybe this is a little bit chicken and egg thing, but I guess it sounds like right off the bat, you started like customizing bikes and make them your own kind of deal. So kind of turn into the performance stuff and actually like, parts that have a purpose kind of did did the riding lead to like the kind of performance parts and those purpose-built stuff or was it the other way around or I think it was a combination of both of okay. like wanting to better my skill set as a rider mm -hmm. and looking at parts that would help me do that um and obviously like if you're a great rider you don't really need much but if you have better stuff it helps you get better and throughout the years my riding has progressed and I've really noticed with an inverted front end and all the different uh things that I put on um, how much better it makes the writing experience, you know? So, um, for me, it's just that, like, um, uh, it's, yeah, it's a little bit of chicken and egg. It's, it, they both like feed off one hand other. in hand. And then you go down the rabbit hole of like, oh shit, this is fun. And then when you start making good money, you're like, I can afford it. Let's keep it going. I mean, those good parts, like make you want to ride more. I think I was 
talking earlier, when I first started off, I wouldn't do jack to my bikes. Maybe a seat and bars and an exhaust, like a typical stuff. Other than that, it was just riding it or whatever. And then I finally rode a bike that was legit built. And it was like, oh, like it makes you want to ride more. And so the better parts make you want to ride more. And then you ride more, you want better parts. It's kind of a little bit of a, goes hand in hand. And then you do yeah. a customization. You're like, I want to see what the difference this did when I did this. And like, how does this handle better in this situation? Or you upgrade the brakes, the stopping motor, how fast you can go, all, all that goes hand in hand. But as you start doing it, you just go down the rabbit hole, so. I guess you mentioned your stepdad's kind of like your first exposure to bikes. I guess what I guess what made you actually want to get on the bikes and start riding in the first place and then kind of went to that whole like customize them and make them your own thing, kind of how did that happen? Yeah, so he had a bike and I always liked motorcycles even as a kid, like I'd always see a Harley ride by, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a bike one day. Um, and then in Illinois, you had to be 18 to get your motorcycle license. So the weekend I turned 18, I went to like a class at a community college. It was pouring rain the whole weekend. It was like funny. I did the class, got my license, and um, my mom and stepdad lived in Tucson, and I flew out to visit. And as soon as I got to the house, he had his motorcycle parked out um, right in front of the driveway, tossed me the keys, I go for a ride. And it was weird for me because my own dad, I never drove his car, did anything, you know? So it's weird for me to like accept that type of um, shit. Uh, ownership and responsibility, owner, yeah, yeah, responsibility yeah, yeah. for somebody else's stuff yeah yeah and it sure as shit I, I go on a ride i have a blast i go to park the bike put the kickstand down didn't have it down all the way and almost dropped the bike um it fell and i i caught it before and like picked it back up but i was embarrassed i was like fuck like <laughs> dude like yeah i still get uncomfortable like doing these a lot of people want me to ride their bikes and i've ridden several of them and these bikes are some of them are worth more than I am. And they're just like, oh, here, go, go ride this stuff. And I'm like, oh, just because like, I mean, I don't, I don't doubt my ability to ride it, but the fact that you, you know, like how much money that person has into it. And a lot of times these bikes are worth more than just what they're actually worth to the person. And so it's, yeah. yeah. And it's just the time too. Like even if insurance covers it, okay. You know, as well as anybody, like getting parts is not easy for a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are back ordered or take six months and this and that. And that sucks not having a bike for that amount of time. And I have a personal friend that lets somebody um, from his work, ride a bike around a block and he totaled the bike. He thought it was a Ducati and, uh, my buddy had like a big wheel road King okay. and blew right by his house, went up a curb, completely totaled the bike, snapped the neck off, like, and Oof. the bike's still not fixed. And that was two years ago. So, um, but that's what you deal with in those scenarios. That's the kind of thing that ends friendships, whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, okay. Um, so obviously you had, well, you had that like blue and chrome one you bought from Tony at the same time and then you started this one. So what was your kind of like overall goal with this one? And, and what do you want to do with this one? Because that one's obviously, this one's obviously, they were both super clean, but in terms of like that general aesthetic, there's a big difference in like blue and chromed out and now the maroon and a lot of like black and understated kind of deal. Yeah, so um, the blue and chrome was just, I was at the right place at the right time to buy it. It was an awesome bike and had really trick parts on it. Um, Lindo wheels, rotors, um, Krauss drop trees. Like just every single thing you could do to the bike, it it had. Um, but I guess this would be more of my style though. And that's why I sold that one and not this is, I prefer to go under the radar compared to that. I could, there's no way, you, you park it, 10 people are walking up to you. Oh my God, this, oh my God, that, like this, People still do it now more, more just um, more or less, but it still happens less with this than it did with that. And I prefer that, so. Yeah, flying under the radar, like you said. But I also bought this one brand new and every, like bought every part, all that. So like had more of a sentimental connection. Um, it's with, truly, truly your bike versus yeah, like a ball bike. Yeah, exactly, so. Okay. We're gonna have Tony come in a little bit and kind of help us run through a lot of the detail parts, but I guess, Kind of starting this, were there were there specific things you knew you wanted to do or you knew you wanted, I guess, when you started all this? Um, kind of the overall design kind of deal and thought process? A little bit, not really. Um, I had, the bike got scratched and I painted it like a different blue color and then I didn't like that. I painted it the red. Um, but as far as like, I don't know, I, I'm not the type of person to just do a big motor and not do brakes and do that. So it's like, I think it's just a snowball effect of like, Okay, well, if I'm gonna put a 124 in it, I gotta have good brakes. Well, if I gotta have good brakes, I have good suspension. So it's just a snowball effect um, in that regard because I'm like all or nothing type of person. So like I can't half ass anything. So if like I do it, I just do it all. And if I can't afford it at the time, I save up the money. 
and just do it right. So I think that's more or less what this game is like. I addressed every part and made it a pretty cool bike. Okay, I got you. Now you also, I know you're building the bagger you were talking about earlier. So you you keeping both of these and then like kind of what made you decide to like do a bagger along with this kind of deal? Um, riding a Dyna back from Sturgis. Like I rode it like part of the way there and then I rode it all the way back and was pretty sore. And I was like, yeah, two Dynas is pretty stupid. I should probably get a, a bigger bike for longer trips and such. Um, and then more local stuff, you know, Arizona riding. We have beautiful roads, all this stuff. Um, we still put a sissy bar on, put a backpack and have an awesome time with this. But give me a little bit more versatility um, in riding instead of, instead of two similar bikes. Yeah, uh, baggers are definitely way better for tripping. Like we've, I'm looking up to we have my wife has a Dyna and I've got the Road Glide. And the Dyna is so much more fun, like around town and ripping around. But on like the trips, like there's no comparison to be able to do those long days on a bagger, especially the ones that are back to back kind of uh -huh. deal. Yeah. I think you got cruise control, like I have Apple CarPlay on my uh, uh, radio. Like, so it's just the convenience factor of all that um, is awesome, but it's nice to have bare bones too, you know? So I, I guess the options is what um, I like is to have two different complete styles, the option to shred or be more comfortable, but my, Road Glide still gets it too. De depending on your mood that yeah. day. There you go. <laughs> cool. All right, man. Well, let's uh, let's grab Tony and we'll talk about some parts. Cool. You guys will remember Tony from, we did Hans's FXR a while back. So yeah. um, Thanks for having me again, Ben. I appreciate it. Yeah, 100%, dude. So uh, obviously you guys helped James build this like pretty amazing bike. So I'd like to kind of, I guess, run through some parts and stuff like that. Kind of everything y'all did. Um, maybe let's jump into the whole like powertrain stuff first and like the motor and um, clutch and trainer, all that stuff. Anything you guys did on that front. So Cool. Um, powertrain wise, it's got an SNS 124. Um, that was actually installed by FXR division. We did everything else on the bike. Um, but that, uh, it's an SNS 124 with an SNS, uh, throttle hog. I think it's their 70 millimeter throttle body. Um, and then the powertrain, we've got a, uh, I believe we put a pro clutch in this bike. Okay. Uh, it was a while ago when we did it. So forgive me. Yeah, it's been a minute. But, yeah. uh, yeah. it's either a pro clutch or, um, evolution. Those are ones we use most of the time. You know what I mean? Both great ones. Okay. And then uh, I think it's a stock 124, the high compression one. Okay. Just is it that their yeah. uh, crate motor or kit, whatever you call it from crate SNS? Motor okay. They have, yeah. um, cool. And then I guess finishing off with the HPI shorty there. Yeah. Great pipe for biggage motors. You know, it's a good look for the bike. Great sound. James has on all of his bikes too. It's one of his favorites. So, I mean, yeah, you see them everywhere. And I think there's a good reason for it. They look great, sound great. And I think they produce pretty good numbers too, right? Yeah. Especially the big inch motors. That's really okay. where they shine. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, and let's jump into, I know you guys do a ton of Ruby Feeney, right? Yeah, uh, it's one of our favorite brands. Hans did it. I mean, I think seen a lot of the bikes around here running like the whole Ruby Feeney setup. So I guess kind of walk us through this, this entire front end as well from Ruby mm -hmm. Feeney, right? Yeah, uh, that front end, it's actually an Olin's FG424 fork, which is their universal one. It's just sprung and valve for, you know, the Harley weight and application. Okay. But it's got their trees. Um, they're, uh, uh, caliber mounts, fender brackets, um, axle, things like that. And, uh, their brakes obviously. And, uh, those trees are actually a, a collab they did with FXR division. Who you guys okay. know, local guys, good friends of ours here. And it's got a Scott steering damper on top of it too. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think that was everything else there is Rebuffini though. Otherwise. Okay. So. And is this a, I think James was mentioning this was a, this was a Rebuffini fender as well. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a Rebuffini fender. I like it because a lot of the carbon fiber fenders that people are making there, they're kind of a universal one that's already been made and they don't have right, right like, you know, radius or apex to the tire. Mm -hmm. And theirs is nice because specifically for a 19 inch. So it's okay. got a nice even radius to the tire. You don't get that like, you know, um, high point in the middle and then it's tucked close like that are meant for like 17 it. and people run them on 19s and stuff like that. So okay, so it, it looks, looks like really it. good. It's the right profile and width for the fat 21. I'm sorry, the fat 19, so you can run the big 120 on there and get a lot better traction and um, you know not fall little grooves and cracks in the road. I like the fat tires and they handle a lot better for, for sure. Okay, cool. And when you get the roof in today, I know I've seen, I've looked a little bit, since I was here last time, I looked at a little bit 
their front end a little bit briefly, like the whole Nexo front end. Mm -hmm. And so does it come with fender and like the fender brackets or just- or When you buy their Nexo kit at us, it's a one piece uh, or an all-inclusive kit, I should say. Okay. Um, when you buy that one, it's more a la carte, right? So they offer okay. a Rebuffini front end kits with an Olin's tube assembly. Okay. And then you can kind of piece together parts accordingly because again, it's a universal fork tube assembly. Mm -hmm. So the caliper brackets, uh, are separate, the fender mounts are separate. They okay. make theirs for it, but you can run other people's or different styles and types, okay. you know. Um, but the, the yeah, the next up kits are all inclusive. It's like a one part number relatively said and done okay. um, for your application. That's nice, and so you're not having to worry about the fender mounts or what fender you're running, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, they give you all the options and stuff like that, but it makes it a little easier for the customer, and then when we order them, we deal with all that stuff on the back end, you know. And okay. they're all custom, customizable, different. You can pick different color legs, lowers, um, uh, 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 caliper spacers, fender mount spacers, all that's our fender mount color, sorry. Um, so you can really get it kind of tailored. They have blue ones, gold ones, red ones, all kinds of stuff. Very nice. Cool. I guess since we're down in here and we're talking about the brakes, we did the radio mounted uh, Rebo Finis and running Lindell rotors, right? Yep, Lindell rotors, BST wheels, and ceramic bearings, of course. Okay, uh, 19, and is that an 18 back there? 18, yes, sir. Um, and so the FX DLS, um, they have 16 stock? 17. 17 yeah. stock? Okay. All 17. Right. 18s have a bigger profile. Like all my personal bikes, a lot of the bikes like we do have put 18s in the back. It looks so much better. Uh, yeah, I agree. It, it, it opens up that rear. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes limits your tire options on like the skinny tire bikes. It's really difficult, you know, like FXRs, things like that. But when you get to the bigger ones like this, where you can go to like the 160s, 70s, 180s, um, you got a lot of really cool tire options. You can get radial bias ply, different grooves and patterns, all that. Okay, sweet. All right, I guess uh, up here, we'll just move up and kind of, I guess the fairing, uh, where's this fairing from? That's an altered industries fairing. Uh, I love those things there. It's a T-Sport uh, knockoff fairing, obviously, but it's a quality ABS plastic one, not like a fiberglass one. Okay. And it has their whole billet adjustable gearbox. So it's got a uh, an actual adjustable gearbox. You can adjust the pitch of the windshield like the factory one, but okay. instead of a plastic one that was known to break and it had a cable assembly and all that. And um, it's just got like a, a pretty much like a spring-loaded detent system and it can roll and adjust and set like five preset settings okay. and make it a little more, um, a little cleaner on the inside so you don't have the big ugly arm through it and all that. Okay. And, not the plastic stuff to break and fade. Yeah, and you get that adjustability as well. Exactly. Super nice. All right, and then running some hard case risers and all with the gauge relocation, kind of walk us through some of that. Yeah, hard case risers and gauge assembly on there. Um, tall ones for James, because he's a big guy, you know? Yeah. I, when I ride it, it's pretty difficult. I'm like, like I got big old ape hangers on it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. It for him, but yeah, we did their stuff, and then uh, I think big Al highs on it. Okay. And then we uh, modified the bars to run those Rebuffini hand controls too. Okay, yeah, I was gonna ask about that, the Rebuffini hand controls, because um, those like, they look super clean and nice. Um, they're super sleek, but then you got just like the, almost like the new controls up there too. So you've got rid of like the stock housing and everything. Does does that require a lot of work with wiring or the ECM? Or anything yeah, you have that? to you have to actually modify the, the handlebars because the wires exit through this face instead of uh, like up underneath. Uh -huh. So we have to like weld the plug holes up and then they give you drill and jig templates and okay. you can bolt them to the radio control assembly and then bore through holes for your wires to pass through. Okay. Um, but it cleans them up a lot. So you get that big bulky housing, you know? Yeah. Um, there are CAN bus, so they do have plug-in applications. Okay. And uh, on this particular bike, we did it with the keyless start. So you can, you know, you can reprogram it. It just uses the fob for proximity and stuff. Okay. Um, and you don't have to have uh, an actual ignition switch or anything like that. And they- Very nice you replace your indicator lights too. So the actual buttons have different color lights and each button is its indicator light. It's pretty cool. So like your start button will be green when it's in neutral and then red when you're not and things like that. And they have okay. oil pressure lights in them and the turn signals flash colors so the button itself does. Super nice, all right. Yeah. So then, then, yeah, like you said, it just came with so it wires up super easily. Okay, mm -hmm. I thought it might've been some intense like. It's not too bad. There's some stuff you gotta mess with like on this particular bike because we got them, we actually made a mistake and ordered the wrong application all over uh, Italy. So yeah. rather than just doing that, we had to get a little fancy with it. But uh, other than that, they do have plug-in options. Okay, very nice. And then finish that off with a, a uh, Moto Gadget mirrors and... Yeah, I love those mirrors. They're like, especially for James too, because how tall he is, you know? Yeah. Um, like seeing over them, since they're adjustable in two spots, you can get them really wide, really tall. They're super lightweight because they're all aluminum. There's no glass in the mirror. Yeah. Um, they use uh, like a laser polishing finish. So they look just like a glass mirror, but they there's no glass in it to vibrate or separate. It's just all billet. 
Yeah, I was wanting to switch to those because I, I like the look a lot, and they have several different like styles. They actually they like do. polished mirror they have point. more round ones, yeah. tapered ones. I like those the best. Yeah. Um, you know, some some bikes they have the, the arms are kind of tall. I wish they had interchangeable shorter arms, you know, for some applications. Yeah. But oh, overall, they're really nice and they're crazy light. Like, yeah. Um, they 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 literally weigh like as much as like the cardboard that they come in. Instead oh, of, like, wow. You know, that they're light. Sick. Yeah, they're crazy light. Yeah, I, I really like that. The adjustability at two points, but then I think you can only get them in black, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I don't think was, they offer any other options. Yeah, that's what kind of killed me because I was doing the whole like chrome polish look or whatever. Yeah, I was for like, sure. You I polish those mirrors already. Just polish some of the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, just the whole know? thing. <laughs> just um, get you all chrome finished mirror. Yeah. Um, and then obviously he's running, I guess he covered up his dash there. He's got a like, carbon dash piece with some covers there. Yeah, we got that from uh, 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 Kirk Taylor over at uh, Custom Design Studios or Italian Performance Parts, same thing. Um, but he makes those dashes for him. And then we just put some of those hard hard case block off plates so we could relocate the gauges and put them up top there and make them a little more visible for him and the rider, you know? Cool. Very nice. All right. Uh, we'll jump to the rear back there. Obviously, oh, we already talked about the carbon wheels and the Reboot Fini stuff, but he's got uh, the swing arm, the Olins, and all that. Kind of walk us through some of the rear stuff back there. Um, pretty conventional stuff we do on, like, pretty much everything we do here. You know, when we're doing this type of bike, got the Olins piggybacks. They're... they're uh, you know, our favorite suspension system to go, especially with this application, uh, the track swing arm. That was their first gen too. That's like the really light one. It's a um, not their billet series, it's their fabricated one. So it's okay. even lighter, you know, a little yeah. bigger on this bike. I think it looks really good. We like to use the billet series on like FXRs and stuff because they're okay. a little smaller, you know, yeah. as far as yeah. not so tall. But on this bike, I think it fits real well. We did a Russ Warnemont, um Full length fender because this is a DLS, so it has the shorty one, mm -hmm. you know, the ball. Um, and then we put their nice, smooth, round, and even radius fender that goes full length. Custom Dynamics tail light too, of course. They're really bright. Those pro beams are awesome. Yeah, those uh, and they're like those full fenders. Those look good. We uh, Emma has a FX DLS as mm -hmm. well, um, but she's still running that sh that stock like Bob fender, and I feel like those full fenders just, um, especially if you're raising it up some. On the suspension. Yeah, if you so pick them better. up, it looks goofy, I think, with the short ones. When you have the tall ones, uh, you know, the when they're lower, it doesn't look as bad. And they make some really cool kits, like um, I think uh, Cycle Visions makes like that license plate for yeah. you know, that hangs underneath them, fills it up a little bit, which is a nice solution for some people. But I like going the full length fender the best. I think okay. It fills it up the most. Are those are the Owens 14s or were those? Those are their uh, 13 and 5 eighths, okay. actually. Okay. So they have an adjustable ride height. You can go between 13.2 and 13.6. Okay. Um, I guess that, like, obviously, running taller rear shocks, when you do, like, the Rebuffini kits, mm -hmm. do the, are those usually, like, two over, or do you, can you do stock height versus two over? How does that usually work on the front? Well, on that particular one, because it's that FG424 mm -hmm. tube assembly, it's one length. That's what they offer. Okay. Um, but the bike sits up way taller because the suspension's, you know, tuned appropriately. It doesn't have so much sag, like, the stock suspension yeah. sags, like, an insane amount, like, three inches or something like that, okay. you know? Um, so it, uh, it's squatted so much further than it needs to be, but it's 32 inches, I believe, or 800 millimeters from axle center to the top. Um, which with this shock, it puts it like a perfect ride height and leaves it like parallel to the ground, not too tall. Yeah. Handling still really good, but gives you enough ground clearance and lean angle. Nice. Very cool. Uh, and then obviously with the motor and everything, big power motor, he switched, he switched to a chain kit as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I always do the chain kits we like, and they look way better. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like yeah. them because my, my favorite reason is the adjustable the ability to adjust the gear ratios, you know, so you can really tailor to the rider and whatever you do with the powertrain and the motor and stuff like that. And whether they're a, a whole shot or wheelie guy or a, a high mile per hour touring guy, you know, you can really tailor that stuff. And that's our favorite reason for doing those things. Okay. Sweet, man. Um, I'm going to get me some of these carbon wheels soon. I did it. I like them, man. They're lightweight. Really Dude, lightweight. so, um, yeah, you sure people like talk about like the sprung and unsprung thing. I think I brought up on here several times that I did a, Chris Woodbury's Road Glide recently, and our bikes are set up very similar with uh -huh. like height, suspension, and everything. He but has I've, the carbon wheels on it. Yeah, he's got he's got the BSD carbons, and like mine are like some billet aluminum wheels, which look awesome. But yeah. they're billet aluminum, so they're actually probably a little heavier than stock. And then ride at his with the light wheels. It, the huge right, difference. The, the yeah. difference is yeah, it's gigantic. crazy. You know, it's a difference in like acceleration, stopping performance, all that. You know, that having a lot of rotating mass getting thrown forward or whatever, it makes a big difference. People are. I know it sounds stupid, but it feels like you're riding on carbon fiber wheels. It's like the best way to describe it, you know? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, because I think the first thing I noticed, I went from stock wheels to my billet ones, uh -huh. and like that starting off, you can tell there's a little more weight the bike's having sure. to pull. And then getting on his and feeling how much more nimble it felt like in sure. the corners are just riding around. Yeah, those, those were huge. Yeah, um, they're nice. And then when you do the ceramic bearings, it's really nice too. It's crazy. I mean, you can spin them with, you know, if they're set up correctly, 
to your full 100 foot pounds axle torque you can spin them for minutes and they just go and go and go and go oh, yeah. really nice wow. you can notice that you just even pushing the bike around cool very nice all right let's switch let's finish off with some of these little touches i guess um like the foot controls and passenger pegs and all that kind of stuff uh, we did flow stuff on the pegs pretty conventional you know we sell and use those a lot um good stuff and then they're made right here in in uh fountain hills so we like to use their components a lot just because support the locals and they're, they're nice you know they have a moto inspired theme and every, i mean they've been around for a while Everybody yeah knows right you yeah. know but they're good stuff i like them um and then hammerhead designs are the brake and the shifter i love those um y'all do a lot of those i think Hans yeah, had the same thing we right? do those a lot i mean um, I used to run those on my dirt bikes all the time, and I love them. They're they're all it's a one piece CNC billet arm, so you know they're they're not too cheap, but they're they're nice because they have adjustable toe pegs. You can get different shapes of pegs. Um, they have ones that are spring loaded, so in the event of a light tip over, they'll flex and give. Um, the toe pegs, like for someone like James, he's big dude. You know what I mean? So you can get them in a negative five all the way up to a plus twenty five mil offset. Oh, okay. In five mil increments, which is pretty cool. Very all nice. color, so you can get them in polish or black and then anodized tips and all that stuff. So, And they also have replaceable spline inserts, which is pretty trick. So if you ever strip the splines out on your shifter arm, you just throw a $25 insert back into it and you're good to go. You don't have to replace the whole arm. Okay, super nice. Awesome. Um, and another little touch I noticed out there when I was shooting photos earlier, um, he's got his crash bar and he's mounted his, these little lights, but y'all actually ran the wiring, looks like through the crash bar, right? Yeah, FXR division crash bars. We love using those. They're they're functional, but they're narrow. Like you, you don't even notice they're really on the bike. You, know, yeah. you see a crash bar on a bike, typically they're like these big hoops or I'm not really a big fan of, they're functional, but like just the straight bars, a lot of the stunt guys, right? I yeah, don't really yeah. like the way those look at all. Um, and I think these are a lot classier looking, but they're so narrow. That you really don't notice it's yeah. on the bike, but they serve a purpose. They don't get your sheet metal get damaged, you fall over, you can mount pegs to them if you want to for trips. And then they used to make them with tabs to put those Baja um, uh, uh, design lights on the front of them. And then, yeah, we just ran the wires internal to make it as clean as possible and put little grommets in there. Cool. They're nice and bright, man. Those things, uh, when you're riding next to them at night and he flicks those things on, the whole ground Dude, light up around you. <laughs> yeah, those Baja lights and even the rigid ones. I'm running some rigid ones uh -huh. on Rogue Light. They are, they are so bright. Which Actually, is, those might be rigid. I might have forgot. I can't. So uh, I have to put them on there. I can't tell. I know there's a Baja design. Those like, Baja, okay. Pros, yeah. Um, but yeah, those lights are so bright, especially like in a Rogue Light or something where you got like two of the big ones. Oh, yeah. and even those little things, they're... Yeah. Well, they're nice when you're out in the middle of nowhere or something sure. like that. You really it light can up. be good. Sometimes they're too bright. Me and James got pulled over on the way to Sturgis because I have my ridges and he had his Bajas and we're in the middle of nowhere and like we could we lit up for like you know a mile and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there happened to be a little car in front of us, like a half mile ahead was a sheriff, and you could read sheriff really tiny from the reflectors <laughs> in the back, and he waited until he got out of the canyon. So sometimes they're they're almost too bright, you yeah. know, but they're definitely safe. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely safe, yeah, because you don't even need the high beams, like, like I don't, I don't think I've cut my high beams. Almost right. put those things in there. They're they're bright. Um, so what what headlights this he's running? That's a uh, 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 the JW speaker adaptive. Okay. So it has the when you lean, it'll yeah. progressively light up LEDs because you have like a a flat beam in your headlight, if you mm -hmm. will. So when you turn, ironically, where you need your light the most, it creates like a dead spot. So it'll progressively light up these indicators to okay. fill that void. Um, as you turn, it helps a lot. They're uh, they're they're really really nice and pr surprisingly effective too. They have a they're really good video on their website showing you how it works. But I like them a lot. All right, sweet man. It's a. Uh, I think did we miss anything major that you guys have done of this? I mean, like, like I don't all think so too much. I think we got most of it over. I mean, uh, we did it a, did it a couple of years ago now. So I'm, yeah, I'm it's, forgot I forgot some of the stuff. I'm just excited to have it's been, back here. And James look at is it. James is hiding out there with like a private Instagram account. So actually I actually had a buddy know, right? send me this. It's <laughs> the only reason I found out about it. But um, like most of the bikes y'all put out of here, man, like super clean, dude. Um, I appreciate very it. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, I like the fact that it's a simple color. You know, James, uh, he he's very particular the way he wants his stuff. But um, we have a lot of the same things that we like. And you know, I'm always a less is more guy. I think, and it's, we want to have a functional, but clean, and look good. Like we talked about earlier, sometimes yeah. things just have the shiniest, the most high dollar part or the fanciest paint job or something. And it takes away from just the end of like the, just riding a motorcycle and making sure it operates well and functional, you know, because he rides us back and forth to Sturgis all the time. So it's not just like something you put in park in front of a show to get a trophy yeah. or something like that, you know. Build it to ride it kind of deal. No, I 100%. 100% agree. Yeah. Um, I'll say 100% way too much. <laughs> yeah, uh, dude, I was like going through it. I had somebody send me something about doing like a drinking game with it. I was like, you're not going to survive. And so I'm getting me like a little points color. This is 100%. This is a joke. But there everybody, th everybody's probably going to think it's like the goggles brand or whatever. Oh, right. For like a dirt bike riding. <laughs> but anyway, cool. Well, uh, 
Thanks again for hosting, man. Absolutely, um, man. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. I always like it when you guys come out. Looking forward to you coming out soon and coming to your place, come by, come through, and uh, hopefully I'll have some cool projects for you to spotlight in the near future. Uh, I, I love to, man. Um, I'll drop all of Tony Ramjet's information down if you guys are in the Phoenix area. Yeah, Make come sure by, check home. us out. We're uh, open seven days a week or at ramjetracing.com and Facebook and, and Ram, or, sorry, Instagram is just at Ramjet Racing and Facebook is facebook.com at Ramjet Racing or slash Ramjet. I don't cool. use Facebook anymore, so anybody does. <laughs> yeah. I'll get in there for everybody. Awesome. Appreciate Thanks, it. man. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Have a good one. Yeah. All right, man. So, uh, like we mentioned earlier, I know you're building a bagger, and you mentioned earlier you had a few little th minor things you're wrapping up with this, but... I guess what else do you have planned for this? But then I'll both like in terms of anything else you're doing to it, but any kind of like riding you want to do, or you just focus on your bagger. So any of that kind of future plan stuff. Yeah. So as far as um, when I put the 124 in here, it was right around COVID. Um, so it was ARP hardware was like really hard to get and all that stuff. Um, and with my bagger going up and down um, for the past year or so, I didn't want to put this one out of commission. So um, just clean up, polish ARP hardware polish the pipe, um, it's pretty much it um, for the most part. I mean, there's always gonna be something else that I'm gonna find a way to spend money on, but for the most part that I would say would be complete after just some finishing touches on that part. So. Okay. Um, and then are you willing to share any of the big plans that you got going with the bagger or whatever, or what you're planning on there? Uh, or is yeah. that a secret? If it's a secret, that's fine. It's not a secret, but um, it'll be a completely different bike than people have seen. So okay. it'll, It'll be cool. Maybe we could do an interview on that, or, uh, or I think think I mean, you'd like it. I got I've, already, it. I've already like a couple of photos I've seen. You've already got a lot of like of like the awesome performance parts and stuff on there. So it, I'm yeah. sure you badass. I got um, it'll it, it'll turn out nice. So very cool, cool man. If anybody wants to get in touch with you, like questions about the bike or anything like that, kind of what's the best way to do that? Yeah, just hit me up on Instagram. I'd be more than happy to help answer any questions or say hi. Cool man, uh, appreciate it. Um, I'll drop his info in the description. Um, Check out all the sponsors for the video. They're a big reason this keeps going. Got a website if you're interested in merch, hats, t-shirts, whatever, Patreon. Thanks. Thank you.